Happiness is nothing more than having little worry. And calamity is nothing more than having many worries. Only those who have suffered because of work realize that having little work is happiness. And only those who have kept their minds peaceful realize that having many worries is a calamity. In a well-governed world, actions are proper, and in a chaotic world, relationships must be harmonious. In a world on the brink of destruction, propriety and resentment must be balanced. We should be generous to good people, strict with bad people, and combine generosity and strictness when dealing with ordinary people. The merits we bestow upon others should not be kept in mind, but the faults we commit against others must not be forgotten. We must not forget the kindness others have shown us, but we must not remember the grudges others hold against us. If those who bestow kindness do so without self-awareness, both internally and externally, a single measure of grain can equate to thousands of pieces of silver. If those who help with wealth boast of their generosity and expect repayment, even hundreds of ounces of gold have no worth. Sometimes, the environment people encounter is favorable, and sometimes it is not. But can we make it favorable for ourselves alone? If we also control our emotions, it becomes one good method of living. If our mindset is firm and pure, we can read books correctly and learn from the classics. Otherwise, even if we see a good deed, we will use it to satisfy our selfish desires. And even if we hear a good word, we will use it to cover our own faults. This is like providing weapons to external enemies and food to thieves. Luxurious people are never satisfied, even when wealthy. Unlike frugal people who have peace even in poverty, talented people are resented despite their efforts. Unlike the clumsy who preserve their nature even in idleness. If you read books without seeing the sages and the wise, you become a slave to drums and bells. If you hold office without loving sincerity, you become a thief and official guard. If you study without emphasizing practice, you become a mouthpiece for empty meditation. If you achieve success without spreading virtue, it is like a flower that blooms briefly before your eyes. In a troubled heart, Gaining politics that always brings joy, and losing that joy when your wishes are fulfilled leads to sadness. Fortune and fame born from virtue naturally flourish like flowers in a forest, while those gained from achievements and projects can wither like potted flowers, though they may revive again. But those gained through power are like flowers in a vase, unable to take root and will slowly wither. Learners must have a fearful and cautious mindset, but also appreciate a refreshing taste. If they demand strictness and purity uniformly, they lose the power of spring's rebirth in true purity, which nurtures all things, does not even have a name. Those who seek fame are immediately greedy. Those with great wisdom do not use special tactics. Those who use tactics are clumsy. A tilted vessel spills when full, and a savings jar should be empty. Therefore, a gentleman seeks to be empty, rather than full, to be lacking rather than complete. If the heart is bright, even a dark room feels like the open sky. If the mind is dark and foolish, even under a bright sun, bad spirits appear. People know the joy of fame and position, but not the truest joy of those without them. People worry about hunger and cold, but not the deeper worries of those free from them. When those who commit evil fear being discovered, there is room for good deeds to enter. Conversely, 
When those who do good eagerly wish to be recognized, that good can quickly become the root of evil, and patient people burn like fire, destroying whatever they encounter. Heartless people are like ice, killing everything they touch. Stubborn people are like stagnant water or rotten wood, devoid of life. All these qualities make it difficult to build achievements or extend happiness. Happiness cannot be pursued and obtained it must be cultivated with a joyful heart, and become the foundation for calling forth happiness. Calamity cannot be avoided, so one must remove evil thoughts from the heart, and find ways to distance oneself from them. Even if 9 out of 10 statements are correct, it is not necessarily praiseworthy, and if one statement is wrong, all faults will come rushing in at once. Even if 9 out of 10 strategies succeed, they should not be considered successful, and if one strategy fails, all criticism will rise simultaneously. Therefore, a gentleman would rather remain silent than speak loudly, and would rather be clumsy than use strategies. If the energy of heaven and earth is warm, life flourishes if it is cold, life perishes. Thus, those with a pure and cold disposition, receive and enjoy good things sparingly. Only those with a warm disposition and a warm heart, will have thick happiness and enduring grace. The path toward heavenly principles is very broad. Even a brief expansion of the heart makes the heart immediately wider and brighter. However, the path toward human desires is very narrow. Even a small step forward places one in a thicket and mire. One instance of suffering and one instance of joy refine each other. And after this refinement, those who achieve happiness will find that it lasts. One instance of doubt and one instance of trust should not intrude upon each other. In dirty land, many creatures exist, but in clear water, there are always no fish. Therefore, a gentleman should have the capacity to embrace dust and accept filth but should not favor cleanliness and act alone. What the ears and eyes perceive are external. Thieves and desires and consciousness are internal thieves. However, if the master, the true heart, is not darkened and remains awakened, sitting alone in the main hall, the thieves will be transformed and become members of the household, striving for accomplishments yet to be achieved cannot compare to preserving already achieved works. Regretting past mistakes cannot compare to preventing future errors. One's disposition should be high and expansive but not rough and reckless. One's mindset should be meticulous but not overly detailed. One's taste should be pure but not narrow and dry. If one adheres to principles, they should be strict and clear but not vehement. The wind blows through a sparse bamboo grove, but once the wind has passed, the bamboo leaves no sound. Geese cross a cold pond, but once the geese have gone, the pond leaves no shadow. Therefore, when a gentleman faces events, their heart becomes clear, and when events pass, their heart becomes empty again. To be upright and inclusive, to have benevolence and decisiveness, to act without excessive caution, and to advance without excessive correction these is the beautiful virtue of being not overly sweet, like honey or overly salty like seafood. If one does not waste time when idle, they will be useful when busy, if one does not fall into emptiness when quiet, they will be effective when active. If one does not deceive or hide in the dark, they will be useful in the light. When one realizes their thoughts are heading down the path of desire, they must immediately redirect to the path of reason. 
Recognizing and correcting as soon as possible is the key to restoring blessings and averting crises. One must not pass over things lightly. In the midst of tranquility, when thoughts are clear and bright, one sees the true nature of the heart. In a serene setting, when the disposition softens, one understands the true function of the heart. In a state of purity, when governance deepens, one attains the true taste of the heart. Observing the heart and confirming the path requires these three essentials. True tranquility is not found in stillness alone but in finding stillness within activity, reaching the true state of one's original nature. True joy is not found in joyful places but in finding joy within suffering. Allowing one to see the true function of the heart. If one has discarded the self, they must not harbor doubt. Harboring doubt brings shame to the will that discarded the self. If one bestows kindness upon others, they must not expect returns. Expecting returns makes all the kindness bestowed false.